an incredible tool for data and uncovering trends out there is Google Trends. So you may have seen this, but this allows us to compare different search terms over time and then also look at it over uh, and within different regions and see the different trends uh, among states and countries all across the world, what related queries there are and how that changes uh, by region as well. So it's really powerful data and whether that's comparing a brand and its competitors or innovative challengers, or if it's comparing different product types and the rise and fall uh, through what's happening in the news, maybe hoverboards were super popular and a good gift one year uh, during the holidays and then maybe they caught fire also. And <laughs> so certain things happen over time and you can uncover that by telling the whole data story and bringing things uh, like news articles and, and other events in there in the data. But this is one key piece of that data and it's Google Trends. So Google is kind enough to offer this awesome interface where you can add different comparisons uh, here. And we could put, uh, let's see, e-scooter uh, as a search term. And you can add that along to the list and you can change from past five years to uh, if you want more detailed view of uh, every hour uh, for the last 24 hours, you can look at that as well. So there are several different options for you to do that. Uh, what is sort of missing as I've used this for the last <laughs> number of years, uh, there is a share, but it's going to this page instead of allowing you to export that to a CSV file that you can use in your own data, uh, which is super disappointing. Maybe you have it though. So if you see something on your page with a little down arrow and an underline, yeah, you can actually download that data. That's how it's been for a long time. Maybe it's just hiding it from me. Maybe Google doesn't like me. That's certainly possible. Uh, but what we're going to have to do is use a developer tool. So Google's great at giving API access to developers, and they're also not so great at changing it all the time as they evolve their businesses and also add and subtract features. And so we're going to have to use a developer tool to get to the export for this so we can use this in our data. But if you do have that download arrow right here, Go ahead and download that right now, and then you can open it up in Excel or Tableau to continue your analysis. We're going to pause here, and I'll come back with a different way to get to that data for you. All right, so go ahead and go to appify.com and sign up for an account. Log in with Google or however you log in to sign up for an account, whichever way you would like to. And once you're doing that, uh, pause, and then when you can come back to it and you're ready to go and sign up for an account, go here to the Google Trends Scraper so you can see the address here. If you can't find it super quickly in their Explore version, you can either type this in, I'll put it in the description, or you can search on Google for it and you might even find it easier. So this developer created this way to uh, extend the official API and connect with it. You can try it for free and we just need to run this a couple times for our own analysis and we can do that. So just like we were searching here, and adding these different terms, uh, we add them here so we can add hoverboard, e bike, e scooter, and what else do we have? Electric skateboard. Oh, yeah. Even I forgot about that already. Awesome. Uh, so now we can choose that time range I mentioned. I was looking at the past five years, and so they're just giving us a weekly number for that. So it's telling you. Uh, if it's the past hour, so every minute for the past hour, if it's the past day, you get every eight minutes for that day. So I'm going to do that past five years. And looking at worldwide, you can change that. So if you wanted to know what was happening in American Samoa instead of the worldwide, you could do that as well. And I'm going to save that. So we saved it. And now let's just check out everything here. That's fine. Blah, blah, blah. Great. So let's go here. All right, let's see if we can get this to run. So I was in source here and I was in settings. I'm going to go to runs, see if I can run that. Okay, maybe not. Let's give it a try here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> going to tasks. And I'm going to click select for that Google Trends scraper and see if I can run that. Let's see if that'll work. Click OK. So it started. Looks like it's running. Let's 
if we can get any details on that. So I'll click running, see what's happening behind the scenes as that program runs and connects to the API. It looks like it's going through the process of searching for those different terms and bringing them back. Looks like it succeeded. All right. So that's the log that tells us what everything that happened. And now I'm going to go to data set and they have this amazing setup here. So you can choose whatever you would like it in, whether it's an HTML web uh, version, a JSON file that's a little bit more unstructured data. It's kind of harder to work with, uh, but it can be very useful as well. But CSV and Excel are super helpful for us. So we're going to go ahead and download that Excel file from that clean section on there. And we're going to save it as well. So there we go. Let's open it up in Excel, see if that worked before we open it in Tableau. All right, so here it did work. And we have data for those terms. Let's see if it stores the terms at the end. So it gave us terms at the end here. And then it also, by each date, as a number for that. So we'll actually have to end up pivoting that data because it's a little bit different format than we're usually used to, but that's okay. So we are going to close this and we'll be able to open this up in Tableau and work with it. All right, so let's connect to that task. This one is the most recent. Let's see if we can find that right here. Awesome. So as we saw in Excel, it has by date all of the measures values for those terms, but that is not exactly what I was hoping for. First of all, let's call that a different field. Let's call that search term. So it's a little more understandable. And then all of this data. So I want to click this column and I'm going to click shift and I'm going to drag this all the way to the end and click the last one. So it highlights them all. And so all of those dates are, are actually one date and then each of those measures. So we need to right click on this and pivot the data. And so now we have three fields. We have the measure value field, the search term and the date. So that allows us to create the graphs we want to create. Otherwise you'd have a uh, dimension for each of those days for the last five years. So that is too many. Uh, we need them this way. So this is great. Uh, so now let's call, since that's called pivot field names, well, let's call that date. And it is coming in as a text string with that ABC. We'll fix that in a second. Search term is a string. That's great. And we are good to go. So now we can go over to sheet two, sheet one, and right click on dates. And we need to change that to a date. And we should be good to go. So now we have a date. We can bring up here. And now you can bring search term in. And now you can bring that pivot field values uh, as the data. And now you can see that. So that's a sum. So that actually isn't quite what I want. So the search interest was 0 to 100. So that's adding them all up. And because it's 0 to 100, it's just kind of a ranking of like how popular that search term is. So some definitely does not fit. What I would want is probably... Uh, an average or a median, so I can get a, a good gauge for what that would be. So we want this number to be somewhere in the zero to 100 range. So you can see how that works. And uh, we can also, if I do control and drag that on there to color, you can see that in an intensity uh, as well. So looks pretty good. You can see the higher numbers are darker. You can fix the presentation of this and everything. But here we go. We have uh, search term interest uh, last five years. So that is one way you can do it. I've already made a few other graphs for this. So I'm going to open up what I did before to show you what else you could do with this data. And this is published on public Tableau. So uh, you can definitely check this out on my profile. Uh, so I made a highlight table of the search interest of the past five years. So you can see at a quick glance, so red is low, green is high. So you can see 
uh, very quickly that electric skateboards were super popular around 2015 and uh, e-scooters were super popular in 2019 and e-bikes are in the lead in 2020. So that's a bit of the story and you can see those um, bounces and rises and everything and, and learn to tell a data story about what's happening across these different uh, forms of transportation. Uh, I also looked at you know, comparing hoverboard to others. So maybe the fall of the hoverboard is a story you'd want to tell. Uh, it d does have a little peaks. I don't know if that's seasonality around the holidays. Looks like it, it is. Uh, so <laughs> everyone's buying hoverboards for the holidays, uh, but it's still a rise of the other options versus the hoverboard. So that's how you really tell a data story is like come up with other competitors or other alternatives and really talk through what's happening in the data. But uh, definitely check out other ways of looking at this. There's certainly more things to discover and this is only one way and that's that. So Google Trends data uh, over time.